and welcome back. Well, um, I have a belly full of pizza. Oh, it was good. If you have never tried, and I'm not being paid to, to advertise, but if you've never tried Red Swan Pizza, do it. Oh, it's so good. Holy crow. Anyway, let's get back on. So, we were doing the For Beginners books. Here, Fairies and Elementals for Beginners by Alexandra Charn. Uh, and I, I apologize, Alexandra Charn, if you're out there listening to this uh, somehow by some stretch of the imagination and I massacred your last name, I'm very sorry. Um, this one is all about communing with and con making contact with nature spirits. Um, next, Angels for Beginners. Now, normally I don't carry a heck of a lot of stuff on angels just because you find out at a lot of stores like this. Uh, I wanted to, to carry the, the commonly uncommon. Um, however, um, there have been a lot of requests about it, and I hear you. So, shaboom. Again, this is written by our Kiwi friend Richard Webster. He lectures on a bunch of different subjects. Uh, the I Ching for Beginners uh, by Mark McElroy. Um, now, for those of you who don't know what the I Ching is, the I Ching is, isn't just a bunch of coins, um, although that is how the pictograms are generally crafted. Um, this is a Chinese form of divination. Um, it, it's also a really neat window into kind of, uh, maybe not necessarily their mythology, because it's not like they talk about the myth myths of it, but it definitely gives you a good window into how they perceive a lot of spiritual spiritual truth, stuff like that. It's really kind of, or at least how, how the Chinese used to. China nowadays is a very, very different place. Very, very different place. Um, here we have Amulets and Talismans for Beginners. Um, one of my favorite actual uh, titles for myself, being that we sell talismans here, uh, is technically we're a talismonger. Isn't that fun? It's kind of like a fishmonger, only different. Here we have ancient teachings for beginners. Learn about auras, chakras, angels, and astral projection. Again, uh, we have another one by Douglas DeLong. Sound healing for beginners. Now this one is pretty thick because there's a lot of different cultures that have utilized uh, tones and sound to assist in the healing process. So, very dense book that. Ah, here's another one that I've been asked for. I, I had a couple copies and I sold out of them. Spell casting for beginners. Uh, this one is by Michael Fury. Uh, now I must say that he is somebody that I know very little about. If I recall, I think he's a witch. Um, Actually, read, Ryan. Here we are, practicing witch for over 18 years. Um, that's where I remember his name. Uh, if I recall, he wrote a bunch of stuff on um, Kelia, um, uh, Celtic goddess. And I might be saying it wrong. See, this is the thing with, with Gaelic, is that the pronunciation looks absolutely nothing like the spelling. It's kind of like somebody ran by with a shotgun filled with consonants and, and shot the uh, word till it stopped moving. Um, or a reading for beginners. This is one of the ones going to be going into our psychic development section. Now, I remember earlier there was a one book, uh, Psychic Abilities for Beginners. Very, very thick because it's dealing with a whole bunch of different topics. This one is just dealing with aura reading and aura perception. Astral projection for beginners. Yet another one of those psychic talents, or sometimes known as oob. Out of body experience, O O B E. And this is written actually by one of my favorite Wiccan authors, Edane McCoy. Um, Edane McCoy, um, gosh, she she kind of strangely enough became a bit of a controversial figure uh, amongst pagan authors. It was really kind of strange. I, I don't know all the ins and outs about it, so I can't comment too horribly much about it, but I can say that she has written many books that I adore and that had kind of formative effects on me in my early days as a young witch. Ah, here's another one. I am going to say that just about every book. Here's another one that I've been asked a lot about. Tea leaf reading for beginners, also known as tassiography. This is written by Carolyn Dow, and I, I must actually admit, I don't know Carolyn. But I am very excited to see such a thick book on tea leaf reading, and given the uh, g given the the given my experience with the For Beginners series, um, she definitely gets my trust, being that she's part of the series. Because gosh, those books are good. Uh, now, tarot reversals for beginners. Here's the thing: most people know how to read tarot cards, and every once in a while, one comes up inverted or reversed. Um, 
a lot of people are made very uncomfortable by this. They're like, oh no, it's doom and gloom. Well, no, no, it's it's a modified version of, of the meaning when it's right side up. This book is all about that, and it's a substantial book. It's written by uh, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Robertson. I don't know why I had to say her first name three times. Apparently she's kind of like Beetlejuice. I'm wondering if there's a lady who appeared. No ladies, so we're good. She's not Beetlejuice. Um, astral travel for beginners. They may be thinking, how the heck aren't, aren't, isn't astral projection and astral travel the same thing? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, again, this is written by Richard Webster, our, our Kiwi friend. Um, this is looking more at traveling, you know, around the world and stuff like that in, in, on the astral. Uh, whereas the other book would be dealing a lot more with, with the other worlds, with traveling in inner spaces and in other, um, I hate to use the word dimensions for it, but in other dimensions, in other, uh, other, other planes of spiritual existence. Candle magic for beginners. Now, candle magic is delightful just because it is so simple uh, in its ideas and so simple in execution and yet very, very poignant, very, very powerful. It has an incredibly magical feel to be sitting in a room lit only by candlelight, each candle with specific intent. It, it's, it's very powerful. Um, it's a very simple type of magic, but it's also incredibly effective. So, candle magic for beginners if you're interested. Last two books in this box. Chakras for beginners. Now, if I recall, there, there's a couple of those. Uh, I ordered uh, multiples. Ah, uh, crystals for beginners. This is a new expansion of our, of our book series. Um, I didn't know they put it up for beginners book on crystals. I should have guessed that they did. But uh, I decided I had to get it. It's written by Kareem Kenner. All right, enough of this box. I am making such a mess I'm going to have to clean up tomorrow. But that's tomorrow. Hey, future Ryan, suck it. You know, future Ryan is going to be so mad at present Ryan. <laughs> I'll get over it. Oh. Be gone. <laughs> ah. Another one of my favorite authors is Christopher Pensack, and I have some books of his. Uh, this one is sold out, and a bunch of people who are in the magical community and also Re Reiki practitioners were like, oh, where'd this book go? It's back. It's back. Uh, the Magic of Reiki by Christopher Pensack. Awesome author. I really do enjoy him a lot. Now, we're going to kind of try to stay on, because it looks like there's a few others of his books in here. He also did a, a series on witchcraft. It was the Inner Temple, the Outer Temple of Witchcraft, the Shamanic Temple of Witchcraft. Uh, the Living Temple of Witchcraft 1 and 2, the High Temple of Witchcraft. Enough of me rattling them all off, though, because you're going to see some of them soon. We'll see how many came. So here we have the Inner Temple of Witchcraft. Um, now, if you're wondering, well, what the heck's up with the Inner Temple and the Outer Temple of Witchcraft, um, the, both uh, the Inner Temple of Witchcraft and the Outer Temple of Witchcraft, think of them as the basis for the series, okay? Um, the Outer Temple of Witchcraft is focusing on a kind of external ritual. Um, so it's going to be, you know, ritual practice, magical practice, some energetic movement. Um, the Inner Temple of Witchcraft deals with a lot more of the your internal. It's not like Inner Circle as in like, oh, I can't tell you, it's a third degree secret. Ooh, ooh. No, no. Um, this one is all about kind of the internal work. So think of it as like external ritual and internal work. Ah, uh, now, uh, some people say, well, there were, Europe had no shavings. Actually, we did. Europe had a lot of shamans. Um, some of them called themselves witches and were burned for, for it. Um, the, the Temple of Shamanic Witchcraft looks into, into uh, dealing with spirits, into shamanic journeying, and into things like soul retrieval or, or soul or spiritual healing. Um, this explores a lot of the, the more shamanic, more kind of low magic origins of the craft we know today. Uh, for those of you who, who are, are new to the craft or who, who haven't made much of a study of the occult, um, it bears mentioning that um, the, the witchcraft, the, the modern witchcraft that we have today, uh, very much uh, was kind of a reinvention. It was looking at a bunch of old traditions, but a lot of magical methodology um, was either lost or was so diverse that there was really no one, one kind of center. So, um, modern witchcraft and modern paganism actually takes a lot from ceremonial magic, an enormous amount. 
So kind of getting back to our roots is really kind of, it's really kind of cool. I, I think it's a good thing. Um, oh. Now, we're, we're going to jump over to a different author. This is Silver Raven Wolf. Um, now, there, of course, there's her, her very famous series. It was uh, three books. Uh, to stir a magic cauldron, to ride a, to ride a silver broomstick, and um, to light a sacred fire. Uh, so this is one of the three. Now these have been brought up to date, mind you. So they have a bit more information than the original ones did. They're thicker than they originally were. It's lovely. Good book here. Now, the next book I'm going to show you by Silver Ravenwolf, I'd have to say, is her opus. It is the culmination of, of her entire life as, as a witch. Uh, and man, is it good. It's also dense. It's really, really dense. What boggles my mind every time I see it, though, is its price. The price is, is ludicrous. If I recall, it's like 26 or 27 dollars for a book that I expect to be in the 40s or 50s. It is just full. And it's got a lot of ways to expand your craft. Now, I have only ever heard one complaint about this book. And that one complaint is um, she tends to kind of talk to the next generation of witches. So some of the examples that she makes deal with high school, things like that. I'm pretty sure if you're all grown up that you are quite capable of taking the lesson and making it applicable to yourself. And if not, this may not be the book for you. Uh, however, if you're looking, if say you're an intermediate to advanced witch and you're looking for something that is just full of info, this is a great place to look. Another thing I love too is that once you get used to it, because it has these dark marks throughout, it makes it easy to find the section you're hunting for just by moving your thumb along the edge. And I got a couple of these because these are very hard to keep in because they are very good books. But let's move on to the next. Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs. Now this is a beginner's guide. So if you already have some experience with medicinal herbology, this may be a bit basic. Browse through it first. But this is all about, um, you know, homegrown medicine. It also has a whole bunch of recipes. If I recall, there's over 120 recipes in there. Um, and she's been an herbologist, certified herbologist, certified herbal teacher and practitioner with more than 35 years of experience. So let's benefit from her experience, shall we? Oh, now here's a good book. Now, there are many different kinds of paganism, and there's a lot of confusion. Some people think uh, all pagans are witches, and that's not really the way it works. Um, I, a good way to put it into common knowledge is there's, there's Christianity, right? And there's all sorts of branches of Christianity, Lutheran and Anglican and Catholic and Mormon. There's a bunch. Well, think of paganism as an overarching umbrella. And underneath it, there's a Satru and Wicca. There's a whole bunch of different styles of paganism. Um, and for those who are worried that pagan means people against goodness and normalcy, no, no. Uh, actually, it's come from the Latin word paganus, which means uh, country dweller. But paganism, this is an introduction to earth-centered religions. Not just one, but just paganism, period, of different kinds of, of earth-centered religions. Um, if you've made a large study of this, you'll find that this fits a, a similar position as... Um, Margot Adler's Drawing Down the Moon. Now, except there are a few differences. Like, Margot Adler's Drawing Down the Moon was her talking to a whole bunch of witches and shamans and things like that and kind of collecting their viewpoints in, in one place. This is going to be talking more about, um, um, you know, the, the, the spiritual views of, of different kinds of, of paganism and, and what are pagan holidays and what is a pagan ritual like? Do we eat babies? Spoiler alert! No! A good book. Here's another copy of The Shamanic Temple of Witchcraft. Ah, I recently sold this book, so I'm glad I got another copy. The Encyclopedia of Wicca and Witchcraft by Raven Grimassi. Now, I have mixed feelings about this book. It is a great book, and a lot, a lot of effort was put in to putting it together, and it's got some really excellent information. However, the personal prejudices of Raven Grimassi, more importantly, the authors that he did not like as individuals, in, in the whole kind of pagan resurgence and, and over the years are oddly omitted. He will record people he was friends with or, or, or people that were important to him. But keep in mind, although this has a lot of great information, when it's talking about people in the craft, some may be missing. Um, now, can I say absolutely it's because he didn't like them? I don't know for sure. 
I can't say for absolute. I do, however, think it's really strange that some authors who were quite prolific before he, his name became as prolific as theirs are not mentioned. It's strange. Especially because those authors which he omits are people he disagrees with. So, but that aside, okay, that's only limiting if you're looking for people who, people's names in the craft or, or big contributors to the community, uh, like on, on the massive scale, like the world scale. Um, otherwise, the, for information, it is a wonderful book. And Raven did a lot of work on it. And he's very talented. It's just, sadly, sometimes a writer's bias comes through, right? Right? Ah, there's a big, thick book of doom. The Golden Dawn, 7th edition by Israel Regardi. Now, it bears mentioning, every time you hear about something by Israel Regardi, you can almost bet in modern day that Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Cicero are involved. Uh, that would be uh, Chick Cicero and Sandra Cicero. Um, they're kind of, think, think of them as kind of his successors. Um, but this is an excellent hard hardcover, very beautiful, beautiful book. Lots of information. If we're talking about dance, if you're looking to get into the Golden Dawn or practice um, a very ceremonial style magic, this is the one for you. Excellent book. It's sturdy as heck. Ah, the first of the tarot cards. Actually, it bears mentioning. Um, one of the boxes I opened earlier, I had to open because somebody was listening to me talk about which decks came in, and they fell madly in love with one, um, or rather they had fallen madly in love with one, and then they heard the name of it, and so I had to open up a box and take that one deck out. So one of the decks is already sold. This is something called the Wild Unknown Tarot. Um, this has <coughs> not just the deck, but the guidebook and a, and a very beautiful box with one of those ribbons to help you bring things up and out. Um, this deck actually was, was shown to me by one of my students and it's amazing from what I've seen of it and I decided I had to carry it. Because wow is it ever, the, the artistry is phenomenal and the energy of the deck is great too. That's another box down. We have two more. We're almost done. <laughs> Where's my cut of a jig? Gosh, you know, it's been a long time since I've done one of these unboxing videos. I forgot how much fun they are. I mean, I just kind of stand here, look at books, which are some of my favorite things, babble incoherently about them, and I guess you guys find me amusing, which is wonderful. Thank you very much, by the way, for finding me amusing. I think that I'm pretty darn boring when I'm doing this, but um, I'm, I'm glad we're having fun, because then I'm having fun going through these, and you guys get to hopefully have fun at home while I'm doing this. Cardboard. Ah. So, for those of you who requested the witch's calendars, I got them in. Now, I only have a few of you, because uh, there's only been very, very, like, a small, tiny cluster of people who wanted them. Um, and with stuff like this, if I order it in and it doesn't sell, I get a whole bunch of calendars for a year that it no longer is. Yay! It's not fun. It's a waste of money. But if you want one of these, I will order them in for you. I just know that if you don't see it in the store, I can get them on request. Uh, I'm not going to order a whole bunch of them in because I don't want to be stuck with a whole bunch of them by 2025. Now the Witches, oh, actually, for those of you who aren't familiar with Witches calendars, these are put up by Llewellyn's. They usually have some pretty amazing art in them. Um, same artists or same style as, as uh, the Witches Companions, uh, but they also usually have little articles on the side by the picture. And sometimes it'll be a spell, sometimes it'll be a recipe or a craft. But it's it's a lot of fun. Um, actually, if some people have wondered where I got a lot of my recipes for my grub war and stuff like that, from a bunch of almanacs and calendars and things like that. Of course, experiment with them first, find out if you're going to like them. Because it's no good writing a recipe in one of your books and later on you're like, I'm gonna make this, oh God, who knew it tasted like squirrel butt? Well, you would have if you tried it out first. Um, now this is the Dragon Calendar. Actually, it's really nice art. Ooh. Very pretty. Cool, cool. And again, that's a 2019 calendar. Ah, uh, there's been a few requests for this. There's the other witch's calendar. But there's been a few requests for this. And again, these were brought in for specific people who had asked for them. If you would like one, let me know and I will put it on my, on my order. That way when they send the rest of the missing portions of this big order, um, it'll come in with it. But this is the Wee Moon on the Wall. This is the, the, the Wee Moon calendar. 
and it's got a lot of amazing artwork. It really does. It also very, very, um, very, very largely. Like a lot of times, calendars will record the moon phase in tiny little dots, and you have to be standing about a foot away from it to actually see. This one, and uh, actually, awesome. They have a picture. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but there's uh, the calendar itself, kind of what what the pages look like, and in the center of each square for the day, there's a big representation of the face of the moon. It's awesome. And this year's um, th this year's kind of theme is fanning the flame. <laughs> Which one? This one. Ah, hypnosis for beginners. Now, weirdly enough, I've been asked about this. And most people ask about it because of past lives. Does this deal with past life hypnosis? Yes. Yes. So if you're, now it doesn't just deal with that, it deals with hypnosis to help you overcome fears and phobias and, and um, to try to help the body heal quicker, stuff like that, um, for gaining confidence, increasing creativity. But one of the things that I thought people would be most interested in is helping people learn more about their past lives or how to guide other people through past life regression. So interesting book, very, very interesting book. Um, well, let's do this one next. Ah, uh, Mindfulness for Beginners. I was kind of surprised at how quickly a lot of the books on mindfulness and awareness um, flew off the shelves. Uh, and some people asked me if I had heard about John Kabat-Zinn, and I was, well, the only answer I had was no, actually. It, it sounds a little bit like a dance or an interesting dessert. Um, however, I'm very excited to have his book because it comes very highly recommended, and it comes with a CD. Come here. Um, more information on chakras. This is the ABCs of chakra therapy. Now, this is kind of a workbook um, to help you you do energetic work on yourself. And of course, by familiarizing yourself with the methods, you can then help others as well. So, think of it as kind of a, not, not only a bunch of information about the chakras and how how to treat them and heal them, um, but also kind of a where is my energy blocked or where is it having problems flowing. Think of it as like a self diagnostic. Ah, now along similar lines of paganism, an introduction to earth religions, we have The Path of Paganism by John Beckett. Now this is another book that comes enormously recommended by a lot of people who I adore and trust. Um, if you're wondering, who the heck is John Beckett? John Beckett is part of the Obod. And if you're wondering, what the heck is the Obod? We're going to go down this rabbit hole a little bit. Um, that's the Order of Bards, Obates, and Druids, um, which is one of the big Druidic orders on planet Earth. Um, so check it out. I, if I recall too, he's also involved in um, the Congregationalist Covenant of Universalist Pagans. Um, oh gosh. It seems to me actually he's also involved with uh, another one of the large Druidic orders, the uh, Ardre Fane. Yes, yes he is. Excellent. So, he kind of looks at it from both angles. The Obod and the ADF. The archery thing. Ah, uh, well, here I am, back to fangirling. Scott Cunningham. I love this book. The Complete Book of Incense, Oils, and Brews. Not only does it tell you how to do things like make poultices, make tinctures, make balms, make teas, make incenses. It goes through a whole bunch of information. Very, very good, very, very good teaching book. My favorite part about it, in the back, as well as having a whole bunch of formulations, it has a section on magical substitution. Like, don't have frankincense? Try copal or pine resin. That and it separates things by magical goals, whether you're looking to use the herb, the, the essential oil, a bouquet of essential oils, or synthetic. Like, it's... Good book. Definitely worth the money. So worth the money. Now, while I'm fangirling all about Scott Cunningham, um, after his death in a plain vanilla envelope was found um, a book of shadows that he was putting together that he, that he wanted to kind of put out. It was called, if I recall, it was a American, uh, American Witch's Book of Shadows. But getting it in print, this is the book that he never printed in life. 
thought, it's all his writings and recipes. This essentially, if you like what you see in Scott Cunningham's books, and you'd like to know more about the, for lack of a better word, the tradition that, that sprung from it, although I don't really think the tradition is named, this is a way to kind of look into his book of shadows. Check it out. And this is a book I own, personally, because I'm a fangirl, apparently. <gasps> Yet another one I've been asked a lot about, Pendulum Magic for Beginners. Now this is looking not just to use pendulums for yes or no answers, this is also looking into how do you use them to locate lost objects. How do you, how can you use it to help you change bad habits, resolve health issues. Phew. And again, as our Kiwi friend Richard Webster, or Diane Brandon. Now this is dream interpretation. And this is looking at you know types of dreams, how to increase your dream recall, how to do lucid dreaming, um, how to do dream interpretation, um, and how to use your dreams to communicate with your higher self, with your subconscious or your higher conscious. Says Diane Brandon. Ah, now this is just a very small book. This is a Beginner's Guide to Shamanic Journeying. If you already have a bit of a grasp on shamanism and you just want to know more about shamanic journeying, this is an excellent book. Although it's it's somewhat thin, and it, it, she gets right to the point. She really, really does. And then it includes kind of a, I don't want to call it musical. She, she guides you through with drumming. But it's got a CD in it as well. Another dream interpretation for beginners, because I've been asked by about that one a lot. Oh, now it bears mentioning too, by the way, dream interpretation books and a lot of um, kind of dream dictionaries or dream symbol analysis books, um, they have more use than just in dreams. If you're doing tea leaf reading, if you're doing scrying and you get a symbol, it can be helpful to read some of those interpretations of the symbol. Always remember though, your own connotations for a symbol override what any author writes. What I mean by that, just a quick example, um, a lot of authors may see perhaps uh, spiders meaning you know, just trust or who knows what. Um, spiders to me uh, mean protection, mean safety. It's a long story. Ask me sometime in the story and I'll explain to you the, the creepy tale of how I came to absolutely adore spiders, not be grossed out by them half as much as I used to be, and how I wound up torturing my poor husband by having him stand in a shower while a bunch of spiders descended on his head. It's nightmare fuel. Anyway, on to different topics. Intuition for beginners. Ever wonder what that, that inkling or the shiver in the back of your neck or that, that strange thought in the back of your head is? It could be intuition. It could be your spiritual self telling you something. The best way to, to heed its warnings is to learn how to listen. Ah, remember I was talking about the first book in the Elemental series done by Scott Cunningham? Earth Power. It isn't just about Earth, although the title talks about Earth, this uh, deals with all four elements and has excellent magic techniques used to, to pull those energies into oneself and to use the elements around yourself for magic. <coughs> Sometimes you don't have magical tools around you. You are always surrounded and suffused with the elements. Always. You are never helpless. Ah! I'm sorry, this, tonight's been a lot of fangirling. Um, Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. Remember the earlier one I showed you, his, his guide to magical herbology? Um, now this goes along with, the, the, the other one was the first one. This is like the, the intermediate and farther graduated course. It's much more expanded. Um, it, it, it isn't entirely redundant with the other one. Um, I, I, I have both of them. Uh, and they both have useful information. Very, very useful information. There are there is some information doubled up, but it's not a lot, uh, which is good. Which is very, very good. Now here's here's one that's brand new to our collection, uh, and it's just because it comes very highly recommended. I had a few people come in. They talk about traditional Wicca, a seeker gu a seeker's guide. Um, now, if I do recall, I mean people have heard me talk about trads or traditions. And a lot of times people learn solitarily from books. Um, this is, if I recall, talking more about uh, learning from a trad. Let me double check. Yeah, pretty much. Now you may wonder, what is a seeker's guide? What is a seeker? 
A seeker is somebody who is looking into the craft, but it, it's it's not that there, there's no oath sworn. There's nothing like that. They're not a dedicate. They haven't you know, they haven't made an oath to the divine to follow this path, or, or they're not an initiate. Um, so it, it's meant to be written to people who don't know a lot about the craft. So don't worry about it being way, way over your head. It's to make it much more accessible. Uh, apparently, they had a lot of Cunningham's books in the warehouse. Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Crystal Gem and Metal Magic. Not only does it have uh, a bunch of information about different stones and birthstones and magical lore regarding it, um, it also links things to planetary correspondences, elemental correspondences, uh, and, and, and gives you, if I recall, a good few spells. Um, it's been years. I need to go through some of my older books in my library. It's been years. But it'll link, like, for example, turquoise. It'll give you folk names in, in Arabic, Turkey, Greek. Um, gives you kind of energy, whether it's perceptive or, or receptive. Uh, planets associated with it, elements. Deities associated with it, associated metals, powers, magical ritual lore about it, magical uses about it. A bunch of stories and information. Awesome book. Awesome, awesome book. Okay, so this apparently is a Scott Cunningham box. This is Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Wicca in the Kitchen. Um, this is an excellent book or, or kind of companion book. Uh, although it wasn't written to be a companion book too, but it's a great companion book to the Kitchen Witches Cookbook, uh, written, written by Patricia Telesco. Um, this one is awesome. Although if I recall, I think this one came out before the Kitchen Witches Cookbook. I think that this was kind of the groundwork and she really expanded on it. Yeah, it came out in 1990. Second printing was the year after I was initiated. Oi, oi. Somewhere, my other half just whispered, Oh, witch. Ah, now let's jump out of Low Magic and out of account. Let's head over to the high ceremonial arts. Um, here we have another book written by Israel Regardi, originally edited and annotated by the Ciceros. Remember that couple I was talking about? The Tree of Life, an illustrated study in magic. Now, something that bears mentioning, by the way, is that the Ciceros, one thing I, I, I've always been very impressed by, is that they don't just fangirl all over Israel Regarde. Um, they do write critiques, and they're actually really quite fair. They acknowledge what worked and what was good, and they also acknowledge what didn't work so well, which is fantastic. It's very easy to point out all the wonderful things about somebody or an author or a teacher, it's another thing entirely to take a very honest look at them and say, yes, these were good, and this is where it wasn't so good. So I've always been impressed with the Ciceros for that. Intellectual integrity, good stuff. Ah, oh, now I, there's been a few uh, requests to have something about Alter, and I, I, I got a couple of books on the Alter because I don't like having just one author's viewpoint. Um, and don't worry, there's so many more books coming on, on like Wicca in the Kitchen, like magic.